Tall Tale TV. Of Monsters and Mushrooms by Leslie Heron. Chapter 14 Plerotus. Vel locked eyes with each party member and nodded to them as a group. He knew what to do, they knew what to do, and Eric was in position. There'd be no better time. Now! And then all hell broke loose. The plan had worked flawlessly. Alpha lay unconscious. They had the device in hand, and as a group, they jumped through the portal with a flourish. At least, that's what he told himself. And if anyone asked, even in the years to come, that's how he'd explain it. But in reality, the only hell that broke loose was Attila had managed to trip over his own poncho and collided into Briggs' massive side, his hat flying away comically. With impressive efficiency, as if Alpha had anticipated resistance, everyone had been surrounded, quite literally, by massive goo creatures. Alpha had conjured them, spawned from the depths of the ground with a fanciful wave of his hand. The party had been subdued before Vel could even draw his sword. Attila was face down, a sizable mass of sentient inky sludge sitting on his back. Brig was being restrained by four very round gelatinous creatures. Eric was held in place, literally at Alpha's feet, and Vel's hand had been glued with sticky black tar around the handle of his sword. The blade stuck halfway through the motion of being withdrawn from its scabbard. He cursed under his breath as he struggled against the monstrous grip of the overbearing unseen. Did you really think I wouldn't see that coming? Alpha asked, turning his impassive face towards Avel. You insult me. His voice was bitter with distaste as he stepped before the mechanical man, his feet leaving an inky trail in the sand. You might have made it out of here alive. Oh, please. Vel interjected with a snap, his attitude souring as his mind raced through strategies, each one more hopeless than the last. You already said you're going to eat us, so quit your blustering and just get it over with. <laughs> Attila chuckled nervously, struggling against his own restraints. He moved his head back and forth a bit, shoveling sand out of the way so he could speak. What he means is, uh, you don't want to eat us. We haven't showered in, like, three weeks. Attila gave a strong sniff of the air, as if to demonstrate this fact. He wrinkled his nose hard. Apparently Briggs gone without a wash for even longer, he muttered, mostly to himself, snorting violently in a vain attempt to extricate the smell from his nostrils. You got what you wanted, right? Eric asked, straining to look up at Alpha from behind large bands of goo that had been wrapped around his face. You have your own portal locker now. Just return ours and let us go. The thick lines of black ink pulled away from Alpha's teeth to reveal that malevolent grin. He slowly shook his head. Letting you go would be the same as throwing food away, and what a waste that would be. His words slid down his gilded tongue like poisoned honey. You see, I've been exiled to this barren wasteland of a realm for over a millennia now and I am so ready to see what worlds lay beyond this twisted gateway. Alpha turned his gaze, almost lovingly, at the swirling vortex of color. And, as they say, one should never travel on an empty stomach. Eric wrestled against his captor, trying to keep enough of his mouth free. The only way they were going to survive this was if they could keep Alpha talking until one of them could figure out some sort of escape plan. It shouldn't be hard. He was an arrogant sod, after all. Most likely a result of being the only intelligent being in this realm. He was probably dying to talk to someone, even if he planned to eat them after. Exiled? Eric asked, squinting up at Alpha, his glasses askew. You mean you weren't born here? He hoped that the tone he was using was inquisitive enough to spark a conversation. Alpha turned to look at Eric, 
and waved his hand to order the unseen off the pale human. Yes, that is what exile means, if I am not mistaken. What I meant is... Eric climbed to his feet, dusting the sand from the back of his pants and pushing his spectacles up the brim of his nose. That you're not one of these creatures? He asked, trying to play on Alpha's vanity. He used this brief moment to glance around. Everyone was still pinned, in some way, by a massive unseen. Even Brig, who had the physique of a tank. That's when he noticed Evan. Or rather, the lack of him. Eric's fake smile melted into a genuine one. No, I am not one of these creatures, Alpha replied in a mocking manner. I am the progenitor of my species. They are one of me. He drew himself up straight, puffing out his chest, as if he were a proud parent showing off their kid's participation trophy. Eric feigned interest, taking a step to his right. You're the first, but how did you spawn so many other things? Is there, like, another one of you? A mate, perhaps? Spawn? Well, you're rather blunt, aren't you? Alpha seemed almost insulted as he turned to face Eric once again. No, there is no mate. These creatures are all born of my flesh, but they, like myself, require feeding to evolve. I was once as they are now, but the more I consumed, the more I became. A human, like yourself, was the first to awaken my mind. He tasted like alcohol and regret, but his mind was marginally evolved enough to spark self-awareness in me. Eric took another small step to his right. He wasn't technically human, but his race looked close enough that most people couldn't tell. Just behind Alpha, he could see the small figure of Evan darting around behind the barricade of bugs and unseen, trying to find a way in. I realized what I was and how to grow. I fathered many children to hunt for me, always providing me with the lion's share, of course. Humans who wandered through here were reserved only for myself at first, but after several hundred, the effect was almost redundant. I began to allow my firstborn and most loyal to rise in cognitive function. I needed children that could do more than act on the base animal instinct of hunt. I needed them to think, because as you can see, there's not much in the way of food left in this realm. Alpha began to sweep his arms in a wide arc to illustrate his meaning, an action that would land his gaze right on Evan. No! Eric blurted out before he could stop himself. Alpha's gaze snapped back at him, surprised. I mean, no. Eric tried backpedaling his words. There's plenty of food, you know, bugs, if you don't mind the diarrhea, that is. Keep him talking, keep him away from the gate, keep him moving. Eric replayed this mantra over and over in his head as he shuffled farther across the sand trying to draw Alpha's attention. A long, drawn-out sigh escaped past bared teeth. Are you sure you're a genius? I lose confidence in your intelligence each time you open your mouth. No, they don't eat the bugs here because they are not worthy of evolving from. Insects are basic life forms with a reactionary mind, barely a step above the primordial goo they started as. My species can't evolve on their own, a hereditary flaw that I passed unknowingly to my children. They need the help of other creatures who had already evolved to the peak of their genetics. The bugs you see here among my children are the result of those that fed upon the carcasses of this world's insects. They are mindless, barely able to hear my commands. We've tapped this well dry if you will, of intelligence. Vel continued to struggle against the iron grip of the unseen binding him still. He could see what his brother was attempting, keep the gooey bastard talking until they could get the portal locker from him. 
His mechanical arm whirred noisily with each tug on the handle of his blade, and each time it slid free a little further. What about the Guardians? They're known to be intelligent. Alpha stiffened. They are, shall we say, problematic to kill. And besides, they hardly register as intelligent, far less than even your species. No, no. See, I require real intelligence. The survival of my species depends on cognition beyond anything we can find here. Alpha slowly turned to look back at each of them. That dark smile on his featureless face opened hungrily. Something didn't make sense. The gateway to that realm. To, uh, to Earth. Eric started, pointing at the wreath of swirling colors that had once held the shifting hues of purple and pink. Why haven't you made a move for that realm? Why not leave this one for good? Alpha laughed maliciously. <laughs> that place. You've been there. Would you consider the inhabitants intelligent? No. He paused, considering Eric for a moment. He shook his head a little as he continued. While my children have raided it in the past, bringing back select morsels, if I'm going to free myself from this hell, it would be for a realm that's teeming with higher life forms. Beings that surpass humans in intelligence. Your realm, your humans, are just a stepping stone to something greater. Did that thing just insult us? Attila asked Brig around a mouthful of dirt. He finally found his hat with the tip of his boot and flipped it up in an attempt to toss it onto his own head. It landed on the creature on his back and he let out a huff of disappointment. Brig shrugged lifting two of his captors off the ground slightly. Molecule tea scone Attila nodded sagely. Right. Good thinking, Brig. Vel simply rolled his eyes. He turned to his brother and asked, How long before those mushrooms wear off? Eric ignored his brother's question, as he finally managed to place himself between Alpha and the gate. Then why wait for us? Why haven't you found these realms yet? These realms with smarter beings. Alpha's mocking smile faded slowly as he swiveled on the spot to face Eric once again. I sent my minions into your realm to find me humans. Who may have the capacity to teach me something new? Perhaps even a way to alter this gateway? It only allows travel between here and your world. But if I could find humans smart enough, Perhaps I could figure out a way to manipulate the time dilation waves and refocus the energies into infinite possibilities. A seventh dimensional battering ram, if you will. Alpha turned to look at the swarms of Unseen, clicking and chittering alongside the bugs. He let out a snort of resentment before turning his attention back to Eric. Not only did they fail to bring me such individuals, he paused using a hand to gesture to Brig. But they brought me the dregs of the genetic pool. I was starting to think I'd never leave this place. He shook his head again, a small sigh falling from between his teeth. He lifted his other hand, the brightly colored orb still pulsing there violently. Alpha stared at the pulsating globe for a brief moment. That is... Until you came along. That dangerous smile returned to his featureless face. Eric watched in horror as Alpha turned his hand, altering the frequency of his handmade portal locker. The gate behind him whooshed with new, vibrant blue hues before swirling into shades of orange and red. Alpha made a sudden and forceful gesture, and several large, unseen began to pull up out of the ground and they took on shaking, shifty humanoid forms with too many eyes and too many teeth. They shuffled past him, staggering one at a time into the gateway. With each one that passed through the vortex, Alpha would change the gateway again, giving them access to a number of different realms. The last unseen shambled into a gateway 
filled with varying colors of greens, and Eric watched that terrible smile widen on Alpha's face. All is forgiven, however. They will go forth and find me the intelligence I require to father my own portal locker, as you call it. Then I'll be able to reopen the doorways to the realms that close themselves off to me. I will be able to return home. Alpha paused, clicking his fingers together. His gaze focused intently on the bones, as if he were considering his next words. He turned back to Eric. Surely you can sympathize with that feeling. Wait. Eric chose to ignore his snide remark and quirked a brow. Are you saying that the portal locker's frequency can be flipped in the other direction to allow gates to be sealed off? He asked, his interest fully and wholeheartedly piqued. I mean, I suppose it would be possible. It might even be able to seal them permanently. His voice trailed off as he brought a hand to his chin, nodding slowly. It was definitely possible. He would need access to certain kinds of equipment, but if he could figure out how, they could trap this bastard in his shadowy realm forever. Alpha stopped clicking his fingers together, and his form gave an ominous ripple, reabsorbing the sphere into his body. I think it is time for you to stop asking questions. The tarry substance covering his face pulled back, allowing him to unhinge his jaw as he made his way towards Eric. Coming through! Evan, riding atop the small demon dog, came charging over the tops of the crowded unseen. He steered the tiny chihuahua by its giant ears and forced it to leap straight for Alpha. Eric's heart soared with hope, elation pumping through his veins. Evan to the rescue once again, he thought. And then Alpha swatted Evan away as easily as if he were a mere fly. Well, damn. Evan and the pup landed hard in the sand, his momentum bouncing him across the ground like a rock on a lake. He finally rolled to a stop at Briggs' feet. The man's bushy mustache twitched as he gave Alpha a disapproving glare and raised an arm, his captor still hanging off it, to point accusingly at the monster. Positive boom measure! Attila tried and failed to push himself up out of the sand. Yeah, pick on someone your own size, he called out, spitting dirt from his mouth. As Alpha stared at them in disbelief, Eric seized the opportunity and made a break for the portal locker still clutched in Alpha's bony hand. He managed to grab hold of the device, but Alpha's grip was absolute. He turned to glare down menacingly at Eric before slamming a fist into his face. Eric collapsed to the ground, blood flowing freely from his nose. Alpha's form grew an extra foot as he visibly bristled. He reached down and pulled Eric up by the collar of his coat, clenching his fingers tight in the folds. As you die, take solace in knowing that your intelligence, what little there is, will live on as a part of something so much greater. His jaw began to unhinge again, opening wider and wider into a bottomless void. At the sight of Eric almost being devoured by a hungry goo creature, Vel let loose with all his arm could offer, and Scarlet finally broke free from her scabbard. The blade sliced through the gelatinous appendage that held him in place, black ooze splattering him and spraying the ground. He spun and brought his sword across in one swift and painless movement, and the creature wailed piteously as it collapsed dead to the ground. Two long strides, and Vel was upon Alpha, sword coming down in a sinister arc. Alpha took a lazy step to the side, expertly dodging the blow. Insulted, he threw Eric back to the ground and replaced his grip around the brother. His fingers wrapped tightly over Vel's throat, and he leered at the cyborg with a terrible smile. You should have run when you had the chance. Pity. He waved his free hand to his minions. Kill them, save the scientist for me, he ordered. 
Vel tried to shout, but Alpha was cutting off any air making it to his lips. Lights were popping in his good eye, and his vision began to blur. Somewhere behind him, he could hear the pain-induced squeal of Attila as something attacked. And then all hell broke loose. Not one, but two of the large, brutish unseen slammed into Alpha from the side, who relinquished his grip on Vel as he was knocked from his feet. Hickory Choplock, Briggs shouted in anger. Vel landed on his knees and looked over in time to see Brig lift the unseen off Attila. Red blood was still dripping from its maw as the giant man wrenched the creature in half. This caused the two creatures, who were still mercifully clinging to his massive arms, to flee for their lives. Vel shoved Scarlet through the middle of one, and Brig caught the other one by its head in a meaty one-handed grip, dragging it back towards him. Such insolence, Alpha boomed. He rose from the sand, his body sloshing back into a human form. As he absorbed the large unseen, his body began rippling with anger. I shall make your endings one of torment and endless pain. More unseen surged forward, and he consumed them with ferocity, his form beginning to lengthen. I shall flay you an inch at a time. I shall sear the very flesh from your bones. I shall... Yeah, yeah, enough already. Evan was on his feet, charging the towering monster with his machete drawn. He leapt and swung, taking off Alpha's hand at the wrist. Alpha showed no sign of pain, but his outrage was evident. I will feast upon your entrails. He loomed over them, nearly ten feet tall, and made to grind Evan into the ground with his handless stump. Attila dove in, snapping up Evan and rolling out of the way of the impact. Dirt showered them, cascading down in a fine mist as they were tossed aside when Alpha wrenched his arm up out of the sand. He bellowed again and lifted a massive foot to stomp down on them. Brig charged in and swung his fist, the unseen still clenched in his grip. It connected with Alpha's grounded leg, which was pulled out from under him, sending him toppling backwards to the ground. Eric groaned as he forced himself into a sitting position. He had one hand clamped feebly around his still-bleeding nose, trying to stem the flow. He staggered to his feet and searched the sand. His eyes fell on the hordes of Unseen surging forward to join with Alpha. They had to get out of here, and fast, or Alpha would become more than they could handle. Vel, we need the portal locker. Vel reached down and wrenched Attila to his feet. He hid his concern for his brother with a well-placed, snarky statement. So pick it up, you idiot. Eric looked down. Just behind him, covered in sand and gooey tar, was a skeletal hand still clenched around his portal locker. Oh, right. Alpha climbed to his feet, his massive form looming high above them. He leaned over and snatched Brig up by the leg. He pulled him into the air slowly, dangling him upside down before him. I should have hunted you down months ago. Briggs swung the creature, still clamped in his hand, like a flail, bashing it uselessly against Alpha's arm. Eric pried apart the bony fingers and extracted the device, still covered in thick black tar, and ran for the portal. We need to go, now, he shouted over his shoulder. Alpha held up his stump, and a gnarled, twisted hand erupted from the smooth surface of his forearm. He wrenched the unseen from Briggs' grasp and flung it carelessly to the side. It narrowly missed Eric as it sailed towards the portal. It hit the rim of the gateway and was sliced in two, sending the lower half of the creature into realms unknown. Attila looked back and forth from Eric to Alpha. We can't leave without Brig. You think you can escape me? Alpha roared, bringing his arm down to collect the others, Briggs still struggling against massive fingers. Vel hefted Scarlet, taking a page out of Evan's book, and brought the blade down as hard as he could. It cut through the wrist joint with ease, 
successfully removing Alpha's other hand. Brig and the clenched fist hit the ground, where the merc was able to pry himself out of the iron grip. Vel reached down and pulled him up, and the pair of them pelted towards the rest of the group. You can never escape me, Alpha raged, spinning around towards them, his macabre visage twisted in raw fury. I shall... Something small and shiny bounced off his head and landed in the sand at his feet. He looked down at the tiny cylindrical object. Curiosity peaked. What? He leaned over to pick it up. Boom! The last thing Eric saw as the whirlpool of green enveloped him was Alpha screaming as he tore at his own face, flames crawling over his body. And then the gate swallowed them. Unlike their first trip through the gateway, where they waded through a thick, syrupy soup of slowed time, this one was rapid, noisy, and full of wind. It took him a minute to realize the air rushing around them wasn't part of the gate. They had already been spat out the other side and were falling from a great height. This realm's gateway existed high above the clouds, and they were now speeding towards the ground at an alarming rate. What is going on? Val called from Eric's side. Somewhere above them, carried down by the wind, was Attila's panic-stricken voice. We're falling, Brig! Val closed his eyes and replied with a set of words that, thankfully, were drowned out by the wind. Eric got one last glimpse of an ocean of green rushing up at him before he clenched his eyes shut and waited for the impact. Sproing! Whatever he had expected death to feel like, he was absolutely certain it didn't accompany sproing. He opened his eyes in time to see the edge of a massive green leaf, easily fifty feet in length. It dipped as he neared the end, and suddenly he was falling again. Oh crap! <laughs> the air left his lungs as his stomach collided with a thick branch. He spun like a gymnast, twirling around the bow a few times before he was flung into the air and was slammed into another. Eight more painful branches later, he thumped into the ground like a sack of badly bruised potatoes. Eric tried to blink away the stars swimming in his vision and groaned as he tried to sit up. He noticed the portal locker was still in his hand, undamaged in the fall. Thunk! Thunk! Crunch! Ow! Attila groaned in pain, his hands clasping around the tail end of his spine. He stared up at the sky above him, as if he was waiting for something else to fall. Anyone seen my hat? He asked after a moment of silence. Ironic houseplant, Brig wheezed a reply as he lay on his back, staring up at the thick canopy they had just crashed through. Eric sat up gingerly. Oh, where's Vel? He asked, looking around. A muffled cry came from below Brig. The oversized merc rolled to the side to reveal Vel, pressed into the ground a small ways. Every damn time, he complained as he pulled himself free, his mechanical hand digging deep trenches in the dirt with every squirm. Where's my sword? He turned around, looking in the shallow pit he had just escaped, expecting his weapon to be laying there. A flash of glinting steel glimmered above the treetops for a brief moment before it plunged itself straight into the ground near Vel's face. A few strands of hair escaped in its wake. Found it, piped Attila with his best cheesy grin. Eric finally managed to get to his feet and moved to help his brother up. We need to keep moving. Alpha could show up at any minute. Attila was stumbling around, overturning small logs and batting away giant flower petals in a vain attempt to find his hat. Can't you just change the portal to come out somewhere else? He asked, attempting to shake off a caterpillar the size of a ruler from his arm. I could, Eric said, shooting the merc a dirty look. If it wasn't a hundred feet up in the air, we're too far for the signal to reach. Well, you could have changed it while we were falling. 
Attila sighed, gave up, and plucked the giant flower from its stem. He turned it around and plopped it on his head, ignoring the bits of pollen that dusted the ends of his hair and shoulders. Oh, I'm sorry. My mind was a little preoccupied. Stop arguing, Vel interrupted, brushing his hands against the thighs of his jeans. Someone grab Evan and let's get moving. You two can argue as we run. Eric opened his mouth to retort when he looked around. Speaking of, where is Evan? He turned back to Attila, his face written with a questioning look. Don't ask me, Attila said with a shrug. Last time I saw him was right before my life flashed in front of my eyes. And then there was that leaf and lots and lots of branches. Great. We let you babysit for two minutes and you lose the kid, grumbled Vel, grabbing Attila by the collar. Shut up, Eric snapped. While he didn't want to think it, Evan was so small, there was a good chance he hadn't survived the fall. It was a miracle they had. Vel turned around, dropping Attila. Now what? He asked, his voice bitter at the accusing tone from his brother. Eric seethed, taking a step towards Vel. This is all your fault. Attila could tell when a fight was brewing, and this one was long overdue. He scrambled on all fours out of the way. My fault, Vel repeated, raising a brow. Who was the one who dragged me along in the first place? Eric didn't respond with words, but felt his knuckles connect with Vel's jaw, glancing off the metal there with a painful reverberation. Eric recoiled, tucking his arm against himself, cursing under his breath. Vel staggered back a step. Had his brother not curled away in pain, he might have missed the fact that he was struck. He touched his face where Eric's fist had hit and felt a small twinge of pain. He looked up in confusion. What the hell was that for? Eric looked down at his rapidly swelling hand and cringed. Because you never listen to me. If we had just gone back to the hovel, we wouldn't be in this mess. There was no sense cowering in a cave. He still would have found us. I said, shut up. Eric tried to land another punch, but the throbbing pain in his hand caused him to misjudge his aim, and he nearly tripped over his feet as Vel sidestepped the wide arc. Eric stumbled and collapsed into the dirt. Vel sighed and offered a hand down to help him up. Come on, there's no use in arguing now. We have to get moving. Eric slapped his brother's hand away and scowled up at him with a hatred unfamiliar in his features. Even now, you can't admit it. It's never your fault, is it? You never do anything wrong. You always know what's best. I can see why Dad left now. Eric pulled himself up from the dirt. You're just like Mom. He shot at Vel with venomous intent. As if he had just been dealt another blow, Vel staggered back a step in disbelief. He stared at Eric, silence and tension filling up between them. As though he came to a decision in his mind, he nodded slowly, pulled a face, and spun on his heel. Fine. The word wasn't angry. He was too hurt for that. He wrenched Scarlet out of the ground and disappeared into a thicket of giant leaves and brush. Eric watched him go, glaring daggers into the spot where he had vanished. Great. Now how are we going to find Evan? Attila asked, looking at the foliage where Vel had marched through. And that's one less person to help look for my hat. Brig exhaled a sigh, and with a heavy palm, smacked Attila upside the back of the head. Of Monsters and Mushrooms, an ongoing series by Leslie Heron, is a crossover fanfiction, mixing her own characters and settings with a few of those created by author J.D. Wiley. She writes for the fun of devising new ways of messing with her characters and seeing just how much trouble they can get into. Ah, you bring news. They are captured then. What do you mean? I sent three of our best. They should have been back ages ago. 
Why am I not surprised? Fine. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Out of my way. I am a god. What danger could they possibly pose to me? Wait, what? What is going on? Oh, crap!